Actually, I think it's better uh, being older and having a kid. I appreciate it more. Mm. Yeah. Um, kid, babies are awesome. They are pretty awesome. They are awesome. Yeah. I mean, also, I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time on AI and neural nets, and so you can sort of see the kind of the brain develop, which is, you know, what an, uh, an AI neural, neural net is trying to simulate what a brain does, basically. Um, and you can sort of see the... It, it, it learning very quickly. I think the, I think possessions kind of weigh you down. Then they're, they're kind of an attack vector. You know, he'll say, "Hey, billionaire, you got all this stuff." Like, well, I'm, now I don't have stuff. Now what's, what are you going to do? <laughs> attack vector meaning like people target it. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Like I have a bunch of houses, but I don't spend a lot of time in most of them, and. Um, that doesn't seem like a good use of assets. Like somebody could probably be enjoying those houses and get better use of them than me. You know, this I started having like some privacy issues where like people would, like lots of people just could like come to my house and, you know, start climbing over the walls and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, man, for sure in recent like years, billionaire has become a pejorative, like it's in a pejorative. So yeah. like, it's like, that's a bad thing. Um, which I mean, I think don't, doesn't make a lot lot of sense in most cases. If you if you've done if you basically organized a, a company, like so, like how does how does this wealth arise? It's if you organize people in a in a better way to produce products and services that are better than what existed before, and you have some ownership in that company, then that that essentially gives you the right to allocate more capital. So it is, it's, th there's a conflation of consumption and capital allocation. I, I, I do think there, in the, in the United States especially, there's an overallocation of talent uh, in finance and law. Uh, basically, too many smart people go into finance and law. Um, so, you know, this is both a compliment and a criticism. Uh, we should have, uh, I think, fewer people doing law and fewer people doing finance and more people making stuff. And, and uh, you know, manufacturing used to be highly valued in, in the United States, and these days it's not, it's, it's often looked down upon, which I think is wrong. It, does it really make sense for me to spend time designing and building a house and I'd be real, you know, get a, like OCD on the little details and the design and, or should I be allocating that time to getting us to Mars? Uh, I should probably do the latter. <laughs> so, you know, it, like what's more important, Mars or a house? I like Mars. Okay. That, that, it, it could, in principle, fix almost anything that is wrong with the brain. Um, and it, it could, it could um, restore uh, limb functionality. So if you've got to uh, interface into the motor cortex and then an implant that's, say, uh, that's like a microcontroller, and, and near muscle groups, uh, you, you could then create a neural shunt that restores somebody who is a quadriplegic to full functionality. Like they can walk around, be normal. Whoa. We're already part, you know, partly a cyborg um, or an AI symbiote, essentially. It's just that the data rate to the electronics is slow, it's especially output. Like you're just going with your thumbs. What, what's your data rate? Maybe optimistically, 100 bits per second. That's being generous. And, and now the computer can, can communicate at like, you know, 100, 100 terabits. I mean, ultimately, if you if you want to go with full AI symbiosis, you'll probably want to do something like that. I'm not sure what would happen to language, but you, you could probably in a situation like this that you would be able to just it would be kind of like the Matrix. You you want to speak a different language, no problem. Right. Let's wire it. Let's download the program. But yeah, I mean, you you could uh, save state, um, and restore that state into a biological being if you if you wanted to in the future. In principle, there's like nothing like from a physics standpoint that prevents us recall everything. But just like it's a movie, Crystal all, clear. It, it, including all the entire sensory experience, emotions, everything, 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 and play it back. I mean, now here, here's the thing: you are a brain in a vat. Then that vat is your skull. Yes. And everything you see, feel, hear, everything, all your senses are, are electrical signals. Everything. Everything. So you can think of the, the this as being 
the, like the, the computer, the AI is, a, is like a, a third layer, a tertiary layer. Uh, so that is, like that could be symbiotic with the cortex. It would be much smarter than the cortex, but you essentially have three layers. And, and you actually have that right now. Your phone is capable of things, and your computer is capable of things that y your brain is definitely not. You know, storing you know, terabytes of information perfectly, doing in incredible calculations that you, you, you know, we, we couldn't even come close to doing. You have that with your computer. Um, it's just like I said, the data rate is slow. You, the connection is weak. And, and yet here's another sort of interesting idea, which is, because you say, like, wh where did consciousness arise? Well, assuming you believe the belief in, in physics, which appears to be true, then, you know, we, the universe started off as basically quarks and leptons, and it quickly became hydrogen and uh, helium, lithium, like basically elements of the periodic table. Uh, but it was you know, like mostly hydrogen, basically. Um, and then over a long period of time, 13.8 billion years later, that hydrogen became sentient. Well, I hope consciousness propagates into the future and gets more more sophisticated and complex and, and that it understands the questions to ask about the universe. At, at the sort of like the, the meme sphere, there's, there's not enough isolation between countries or, or regions. It's like if you get a, if there's a mind virus, th that mind virus can infect too much of the world. Uh, you know, like I, I actually sort of sympathize with the anti-globalization people because it's, it's like, man, we, we don't ever want everywhere to be the same for sure. And, and then we, we need some kind of like mind viral immunity. What are we going to be? Like when? 20, 25 years from now. What are we going to be? Well, assuming civilization is still around. It's looking fragile right now. I mean, I, I think the, 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 the mortality rate is, is much less than what is, than what, say, the World Health Organization said it was. It's very much, much less. It's like probably at least an order of magnitude less. You, you can look at the mortality statistics you know, by age and whether they have comorbidities, like do they have like basically existing conditions? You know, if, if you're below 60 and, and have no serious health issues, the probability of death is extremely low. It's not zero, but it's extremely low. Most of the hospitals in the United States right now are half empty. In some cases, they're at 30% capacity. I mean, ob objectively, the mortality is, is, is much lower, like at least a factor of 10 maybe a factor of 50 lower than initially thought. So let's, let's clear up the data, clear up the data. There, there will be some amount of silver lining here no matter what. Um, hopefully we can be more of a silver lining than less. Um, yeah. It's like, kind of like a practice run for something to have that, that had a you know, potential, that might in the future have a serious, uh, like a really high mortality rate. That, and, and we kind of got to go through this with, with, without, without it being something that kills you know, vast numbers of young, healthy people. Yeah. In, in general, I think that's like we, we should be concerned about anything that's a massive infringement on our civil, liber civil liberties. Yes. You know, so it's like the, you got to put a lot of weight on that. A lot, a lot of people died to, you know, win independence for the, for the country and, and fight for the democracy that we have. And uh, we should treasure that and not, and, and not give up our liberties too easily. And I think we've, we, 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 I think we probably did that, actually. Fundamentally, a violation of the Constitution. Yes. Freedom of assembly and yeah, the, these these are these would definitely not stand up. Uh, you know, if the if Supreme Court here, I mean, it's obviously a complete violation of rights. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where where do civil civil liberties fit in this picture? You know. Yeah. And uh, what 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 can the government make you do? What can they make you not do? And what you know what's what's okay? Right. Yeah, you can't take it personally. Like these people don't like know, actually know you. You know, like yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, it's just like you know, it's, it's like if you're if, if you're fighting a, a war, and there's like some opposing soldier that that shoots a, shoots at you. It's not like they hate you. They don't even know you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So just think of it like that. Like they're firing bullets, whatever. Um, but they, they don't they don't know you. So don't take it personally. Um, if like, what do you think's the the best source of just like information out there like that's a, a good question you know like a, you, let's say you're just like average citizen <sighs> trying to just get the facts you know figure out what's going on like you know how to live your life and you know just looking for what what's going on in the world that it's hard to find something that that isn't 
yeah, that's that that's good. Yeah, you know, uh, that you know, not 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 trying to push some partisan angle, not trying to it, not not sort of doing sloppy reporting and and just aiming for the most number of clicks and trying to maximize ad dollars and that kind of thing. Yeah, um, you're just trying to figure out what's going on. It's like I'm hard pressed to. Where do you go? Yeah, I think like maybe just trying to find individual reporters that you think are good and, and yes. kind of following them as opposed to the publication.